What's up there guys, Chase here. And today we are going to be talking about a local SEO checklist that I created. So if you're looking to rank higher locally and you wanna be able to do what I did, which I've been able to rank locally pretty much anywhere in under a couple months, whether it's my clients' websites or my own websites. Uh, for instance, just after moving here to Colorado Springs, <clears throat> in about a month I was able to rank um, on the first page and uh, for web design. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna be doing today is we're just gonna be looking over the checklist that I created. You can download the checklist as well. You can uh, go head to the link in the description after this and go ahead and download it. But um, yeah, let's just get into it. We're gonna go straight into the landing page that I created for this and this is all free. Uh, by the way, if you don't want to do any audits yourself and you need help with your clients or whatever you're doing, uh, head over to chaserunner.com and apply for an audit. And if you're matching the criteria I'm looking for, then I will consider contacting you back. So let's get into it. All right. So first thing we got to do is head to the landing page. And I believe, I guess I lost it for a second, Chase Runner Local SEO Audit Checklist. There it is. <sighs> All right, so there's about 20 different items in here that we're gonna be covering today. And these are pretty um, pretty easy things to grasp. I, I don't expect you to have to know a whole lot about SEO or uh, about ranking or any of that stuff in order to get this. So, um, Let's just start out with the first one, which is figuring out your content management system. So I use mainly WordPress or Squarespace. Uh, most of the, my own local websites that I'm ranking right now are uh, Squarespace actually, and uh, works pretty well. I have no problems with Squarespace. Um, I'll show you some of the sites that are I'm ranking. So uh, right now we got the web design, Colorado Springs. So here we go. This is a Squarespace website. It was This was a, with a brand new domain. Um, it's got like zero authority. Didn't do any link building, any of that stuff. Um, iPhone repair, Santa Barbara, another Squarespace website, as you'll see here. My web design site in Santa Barbara. Um, also a Squarespace website. So again, for those of you who are like, well, no, uh, WordPress is the only thing that you can use to rank on Google. Um, that's not true. I would just recommend if you're going to be doing like Wix or something to not do that because it's just not very, uh, it's not a very good content management system in my opinion, but WordPress and Squarespace are probably fine. Um, Squarespace is better if you're um, just trying to do a quick website and you don't know how to do a lot of design on like WordPress, like a, like a theme like Divi or something. Um, but WordPress is better if you're trying to expand to like multiple areas. Um, if you're trying to like create like a national website with like a ton of different areas ranking. But um, yeah. So next thing we got is uh, verify Google My Business. Now this is pretty self-explanatory. But obviously, you want to um, get your Google My Business up. Um, I would recommend using your home address if you don't have like an address. Um, I wouldn't like do a PO box or virtual um, virtual address or any of that stuff. A lot of the time that I've tried that, I wound up getting those things removed. So I probably would just skip that and verify your home address with a uh, service area so that way um, you don't get in trouble and um, obviously you're not going to get your name address phone number your citations really listed uh, because you're going to be hiding your home address probably but it, I've still been able to rank uh, most of my websites um, as service areas without doing a ton of citations um, so you don't have to have the physical address in order to rank uh, building citations. So depending on whether you're having a public address or not, um, you're going to want to build your citations out. Um, I use somebody called Citation Builder Pro. Some people say they don't like him because he takes a while. Um, 
I only had one time recently that he took uh, a little while. I think it was like three or four weeks. But um, ideally what your citations are is your name, address, phone number, and your website being listed on um, relevant indexing websites or local citation type um, websites, obviously. Uh, but yeah, you usually want to have like 50 to 100 citations. I use a um, tool called WhiteSpark to check my citations. So if I go to like whitespark.ca, I'm going to be able to see um, how many citations I have. And you just go to your account, tools, local citation finder. And here you can just type in whatever you'd like. Uh, so like if I want to type in like web design Colorado Springs, and then um, it'll pump out um, how many people have citations in that area and like what the citation counts are. So you can see here, um, here's all the different people. And um, ideally you wanna have more than whatever they have. I haven't been able to build citations to that website really because um, again, I'm listing a, a home address. So um, I kind of skipped on that part, but um, ideally you're gonna start out with your home address, trying to rank there. And then if you start getting some traffic or you get like a co-working space, that's probably the best way to do it is just to like buy a co-working space in your area, get that verified. Um, Cause you usually only spend like 50 bucks a month on a co-working space and then you can just leave once it's verified. So that's kind of the way um, I would probably recommend doing it. Uh, next thing we got is um, including your name, address, phone number and map embed on your website. So um, you kind of want to have like somewhere in a sidebar or in a footer, if possible, your name, address, phone number. Um, I don't even know if I have it on my website. Let's see if I do. Yeah, so you, you can see I have the hours, the address, um, the phone number, and you want that to obviously be consistent with what's on, on the internet already. Um, next, you have schema markup. Now, it's a little bit harder to do schema markup correctly if you're gonna be using Squarespace, but um, the way you can test your schema markup is just go to a structured data testing tool like this, and you're gonna just plug in your website like so. And um, you can see I have local business markup. Ideally, you want to have more specific type of a markup. So like, um, for instance, like with our roofing website, we would rather have like a roof repair markup, which is better than just like general local business markup. But local business markup is better than nothing. Uh, it looks like they didn't transfer it over to the new website. So I have to ask them about that. Um, oh, actually, hold on. Let's see if it pulled. Oh, and actually they did. So here you can see this looks a lot better than just local business markup. Um, so the more specific you can get with schema, the better. Um, if you don't know how to do schema, I would check out the tutorial I did on YouTube called um, Teaching Schema Markup to a 15-year-old. And uh, you can watch that video. It's about an hour and 18 minutes of me taking somebody who knows nothing about schema or SEO really and, and teaching them everything I know about it. So I would uh, take some time to, to check that out if I were you. Um, next thing, obviously you can install the Yoast plugin if you have uh, WordPress, if you're, if you're using WordPress. I don't really want to explain what Yoast is because most people already know what it is. It's just an SEO plugin that lets you change titles and metas. Um, and then also you're probably going to want to install WPSSO, which is a social plugin for WordPress. Um, all of these plugins, by the way, I would just check out the regular uh, SEO audit template here because this has a list of all of my top plugins that I use inside the regular template. So yeah, I would just go check all those out instead of, you know, me explaining all of what the, they are here. Um, so setting up Google Search Console, Google Analytics, submitting your sitemap, um, pretty self-explanatory. If you don't have Google Analytics and Google Search Console set up, you should definitely go do that. Um, generating reviews. So this one's like probably the biggest thing for local. And if you could just do this alone, uh, you'll probably win. So if you started doing videos like this, where you were just doing like uh, explainer type videos, talking about how to do certain things, um, one of the things you can do is you can start uh, taking people who are opting into your um, content. So like for instance, anybody who opts into my SEO audit template, I'm gonna get them on a list, like a mailing list or mini chat or whatever. 
and I can start using those people to get reviews on whatever, th whatever I'm trying to rank locally. Um, so you can do this as a local business and this is again probably one of the most underutilized techniques that you can use right now. Um, let's say you want to rank for real estate in your area. Um, you could simply just start doing tutorials like this where you're doing video plus text breakdowns or whatever. Um, start funneling traffic to that with ads. Get the people opting in to leave a review for you locally on your real estate, um, your realtor business or whatever, and you're going to rank pretty fast. Um, next thing we got is making sure all your titles and metas include some variation of your main keywords. This is pretty obvious, but if you go to like Web Design Santa Barbara, you'll see almost all of them say something about web design Santa Barbara and then some other related things. So copywriting, content marketing at web design Santa Barbara, blogging, um, web design Santa Barbara. Um, you really just want to become as topically relevant for your main subject as possible. So like you don't want to have a bunch of content on here about let's say like massages or something. You want to have a bunch of services built out around your main parent topic, obviously. Um, so it's not always applicable, but sometimes you want to build out your related location pages. And the way this works is you don't want to go and start like ranking for every area around your state. Like that's not the point of related location pages. The point is, is like if you're in, let's say I'm in Colorado Springs and there's a couple of main areas close to this um, location, I could create a couple local landing pages to try to funnel some people to my main location. But I'm not going to just go and build out 500 pages locally just so I can rank locally everywhere. That's not what you want to do. And you especially don't want to do that if all of the content's exactly the same on every single page. You want to have unique content on every single page of your website, whether it's a local page, whether it's a national page, whatever it is. You don't want to have a bunch of duplicate content. Um, so setting up internal links to main pages. So what I do on my local websites is I will um, link back to the home page with the main anchor text like this. You know, here are our, our, our team at Web Design Santa Barbara, and then I'll do a link back to the home page, um, and I'll do that on basically every page, um, and then I'll also try to internally link to other relevant pages as well. Um, but mainly, I'm trying to link back to the home page because the home page is going to be the page that's going to be getting most of the rankings. Um, so yeah, you're going to want to do keyword research for national terms if you can. Um, for Roof Repair Squad, what we did is we just took like competitors and saw what they were ranking for and we started taking um, some of their national keywords and started plugging them into our own strategy because the national um, rankings are going to help you build local rankings as well and build uh, by building a national authority, you also build a local authority. So I can show you uh, in phase three, a lot of these are not local keywords, but if you rank for them nationally, you also rank for people who are looking for this stuff locally, which is nice. Uh, what else? Um, adding videos, if possible, is going to be really helpful. Um, I would definitely like do what I did with Authority Nuke, which was the lo local SEO site that I ranked. And what I did with Authority Nuke is I just started taking um, SEO Santa Barbara, I'll show you. I started taking videos that I was making and I just transcribed them and made them into different landing pages. Um, I found that you rank better and you get more traction and more conversions by doing both video content and text content, whether you're doing a local strategy or a national strategy. So uh, that's that. Um, one of the other things you can do is you can do click through rate optimization once you have Search Console set up. So uh, super worth doing. Um, and this is what we do in phase two of the national template, which can also obviously be used in the local template. But we'll go through and look at the click-through rates that um, we're getting and we're gonna change the titles and meta descriptions if the click-through rate's below 3%. Um, guest post stuff, I probably wouldn't do um, locally. This is like an old thing that I had in here. Um, 
Obviously you wanna set up online and offline conversion tracking. If you don't know how to set up online and offline conversion tracking, just look up Chase Reiner online and offline conversion tracking and you'll find it. Like so, check out that video. Um, and yeah, so I mean, that's pretty much like the biggest things. Um, if you can follow sort of what I talked about here and you also follow it with the four phase audit template, you're gonna be doing really well. So um, again, I'll leave all the links to this stuff in the description of this video. Hopefully you guys got some value from it and we'll see you soon, bye.